We are in our fifth session here on this book that we're covering, The Christian and Witchcraft. In this fifth session, we want to look at this important theme of women and the psychic connection. Why is it that all the palm readers are women? Why is it that all the nationally syndicated astrologers are women? One of the most famous psychics was Miss Cleo. She ended up passing away at the age of 51 from cancer. A lot of these psychics die at an early age. Teresa Caputo, of course, the Long Island medium. Jean, perhaps the most famous astrologer of the 20th century here in the United States, was Jean Dixon. <clears throat> Joyce Gilson, uh, was, is the, she was, she passed away early age, kidney failure, only 58 years old. She was an actress. You guys may remember her. She was in a lot of Columbo's, Columbo series movies. Um, she was the official astrologer of 20th Century Fox and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, she would advise the Dodger management on who to pick in the drafts. Uh, she also advised, for example, Star Wars uh, she, based on the horoscopes and the ast astrology, she used to astrology of when to release the first Star Wars back in 1977. She actually picked the date for it to be released because she says that would be when it would get the most, you know, people to come to see it. And so uh, uh, George Lucas used her a lot for advice. <clears throat> when uh, John Hinckley uh, almost assassinated uh, President Ronald Reagan in 1981. Uh, Nancy Reagan resorted to uh, Joanne Quigley, a very well-known uh, astrologer, and all she was asking for was ways in which she could protect her husband. What, what could she do? What could, what could be put in place so that he would be protected? So she, she carried on about a two-and-a-half uh, year relationship with her and it still went on she got criticized for it they found out that she was doing that in, the, in his first term because he was he was shot in 81 and he was re-elected in 84 so she got exposed around 84 uh, Nancy Reagan and a lot of Christians came against her for having consulted an astrologer uh, the president François Mitterrand in France uh, consulted a uh, an astrologer uh, Elizabeth to say she was uh, had a show in France reading horoscopes daily on television. She started a new show in Germany called the Astro Show, where she would uh, teach about astrology. And during the Gulf War, he would consult her about when to send in troops. Um, so you can see at high how high a level uh, this is operating with uh, people who are consulting witchcraft. <clears throat> Uh, if you go online, you will find that there are hundreds and hundreds of books available from women psychics and astrologers. <clears throat> uh, this one, Psychics, Healers, and Mediums by Jennifer Wiggle. This one here, uh, Sonia Coquette, uh, The Psychic Pathway. And one of the things that I noticed, if you go on just on Amazon, just, just do a type, type her name. Uh, they don't have one book. They have seven, ten books available on how to develop your medium powers, how to develop your spiritual gifts, uh, how, to, how to become a medium, how to use crystals and gemstones. They don't have one book. They have a whole bunch of books. And they sell a lot of books. And she also wrote a book called The Diary of a Psychic. And, and part of what she says in this book, I haven't read it, but I read the reviews on it, Shattering the Myths. We want to show you that we're like normal, everyday people that you can rely on and trust, you know. Uh, the Book of Psychic Symbols by, by uh, Melanie Barnum. Uh, psychic Development for Beginners. Another book by the same title but a different author, Natalie Nolan, Psychic Development for Beginners. And they do have even books now for children uh, that are available to people. You Are a Medium, Sherry Dillard. <clears throat> How to... How to Communicate with the Other Side. That's, that's the subtitle there. <clears throat> uh, Deborah Katz, The Complete Clairvoyant. There's a trilogy of books based on this. 
There's another book I think by her too. Yes, right here, The Extraordinary Psychic by Deborah Katz. Caitlin Matthews, The Psychic Shield. She has a whole bunch of books available too. Crystals for Beginners. Is that, who is this one by? Oh, another lady, Karen Frazier. The Untold Tarot. Wow. How How to discover the ancient reading of cards led by light. Here's an interesting one because she's ordained and she titles herself Reverend Joanna Bartlett. She's not just a psychic, she's a reverend psychic. (laughs) God only knows where she got her degree, I don't know. Confessions, here you go, of a Sunday school psychic. Linda Sterling, Psychic by Jen Solis. The Spell Book for New Witches. How to cast spells. Um, We'll say more about that. I want to detract on it. I remember going, well, not a woman, but I went to an Earth, Wind, and Fire concert. This is before I knew the Lord. (laughs) I was in the world. I was in Los Angeles. I was a student at UCLA, and I went down to the Long Beach Arena. Earth, Wind, and Fire had a concert in uh, the Long Beach Arena. And Maurice White, the lead singer of Earth, Wind, and Fire, came down on a pyramid, a gold pyramid. And while he was coming down, he was pronouncing curses over the people in the, in the audience. Because uh, he, he was not expert in it, but he, he had pra- a long time uh, person who pronounced curses over people. Um, women, 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 women everywhere. You go to the Bible, you have a false prophetess, Noadiah, who opposed Nehemiah and the builders, Nehemiah 6. You have Jezebel. Uh, Jezebel was a witch. Jezebel practiced sorcery. The Bible tells us that in 2 Kings chapter 9 and verse 22, when Jehu came to one of the kings and they asked, have you come in peace? And he says, how can there be peace as long as all the idolatry and witchcraft of your mother, Jezebel, abounds? Jezebel had, she came, of course, from that very heathen Baal worship. And uh, so she was a woman who practiced witchcraft. And she was a very much a controlling, dominating woman like that. And you can imagine what she was doing. If you, you remember in the Bible, she was killing off the prophets of God. She was, she, was, she was terminating prophets. And when, when she challenged e- Elijah, uh, because she was the queen, you know, Ahab was the king, she could do it. She could send people over there. Ahab fled. Ahab ran. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Elijah ran, the prophet, and uh, he went all the way down to Horeb. You know, he went 40 days away. But, but there was a real challenge there for him. But Jezebel was definitely a person who introduced a lot of witchcraft into uh, Israel. <clears throat> I remember years ago, uh, during one of the services, I was preaching on 1 Corinthians 12, and there was a lady about halfway back that came to the church. I'd never seen her before. She'd never been here before. She didn't walk in with the Bible. And I noticed while I was preaching, I was talking about the gifts of the Spirit. The whole time I was preaching, she was like, really getting into it. She was smiling, and I thought, man, I'm, I'm really anointed or something, you know. She's, she's really getting into my message. And as soon as the service was over, she made a beeline right to the front right here, and she talked to me, and she goes, man, she goes, you were really led by a spirit today. And when she said a spirit, I realized she didn't say the spirit because there's only one Holy Spirit. She said, you're being led, you are being led by a spirit today. And I said, and so right away I said, oh, some, something's on here. And so she said, uh, can I meet with you during the week? She says, I have, a, I have these books that I have uh, on astrology and, and crystals, and I want to talk to you about them because I'm really getting a lot out of them. I'd like to re- just have you review them and talk to me about them. And I, I said, are you sure this is not demonic? She goes, oh, no, I promise you, these are really good. And so then I, then I try to figure out how can I get out of this? You know, how can I get away from her? And so anyway, I don't know how I did it, but I don't meet with women alone or anything like that, but I agreed to meet with her the next day, Monday, and so I took one of these tables right here and I set it out here, because I didn't want her to come in the the church anymore, so I set it out here in the front, 
And she drove up. She came about 10 o'clock in the morning. She just drove up in a big truck. I'm always suspicious of women that drive big yeah. trucks. But uh, <laughs> she, she <laughs> except, except Cindy. I like Cindy. But uh, she, she came in. And she, she, uh, I saw her walk out with all these books. And she laid them out right here on the front table. And I looked at them. And she started telling me how uh, she was from Arizona, she, her and her husband, and, and uh, he, he ended up divorcing her when she got involved in all this. She started pouring liquids on crystals to have gas reactions. She started seeing uh, faces in mirrors. Uh, she even said these new books that she'd gotten had helped her when she watched TV, that through the book somehow she was and, and watching Channel 30, she was able to connect with, uh, with aliens it, it, it just got so weird, you know, it got really weird, like what, you, like, what are you talking about, you know, and I just told her, I said, I, said, I, I had to stop her, because it was like she was totally, you know, doing all, all this stuff, she goes, my husband divorced me with all, I didn't say, I, yeah, I can realize why he divorced you, <laughs> and so anyway, she began, to, she began to talk, and I said, you know, ma'am, you see that big truck, that big dumpster out here, this trash dumpster? Why don't we take all these books and let's dump them out here in the trash? I go, because this is all witchcraft. You need to repent. You need to renounce your involvement with witchcraft. She goes, no, Pastor Charlie. These things have been, I mean, this is supernatural. I go, yeah, it's supernatural, but it's of the devil. And I said, you are deceived here. You know what? She picked up all of her books and she walked away and she just kept her books. She didn't want to get rid of them. So I remember coming back in and I just spent some time here praying for her. I never saw her again. But why do I bring up this whole thing about women? <clears throat> women are very sensitive spiritually to a lot of things. And you women have to be careful too. <laughs> and uh, the most important person in the ministry for me is my wife. And I say that to all you men. The most important person in your ministry life is your wife. Your wife has a sensitivity, uh, a perception that God has given her. And if she's of God, it's a powerful tool in your ministry life. And so one of the persons I consult a lot, I did a lot more than I, first, I did at the beginning of my um, ministry life. Whenever I want to do anything, whenever I'm going to go meet with anybody, I talk to my wife. You know what? My wife has been so accurate with discerning people. Like she goes, don't waste your time with that person. Why? He's a, he's a nice guy. He said he liked the preaching and he liked the church. She goes, don't waste your time. All right, well, I'm just going to go to lunch. Never saw the guy again. Total flake, just like my wife said he was, you know. But it's something about the women that are very perceptive. And, of course, we have to be discerning. And these women have these abilities and gifts that God has given them. And if they use them in the right way, it's very, very powerful. They use it in the wrong way, it's very, very destructive. And so being cautious of this and what we see in the Word of God, and we're going to see it in the very next chapter, Paul's going to deal, in the very next section, Paul deals in Acts uh, 16 with this, with this slave girl that was possessed with a spirit of divination. So we're going to go uh, that. So we'll, we'll, that was what I was talking about. This lady had the crystals and all that stuff, these books on gemstones. And we'll say more about that in another session. So in the next one, we're going to go in Acts 16, and we're going to see how Paul and Silas dealt with this uh, fortune-telling slave girl in that chapter.